it on the divine master and pray for the well-being of the whole humanity om stavakay jadamasya sarvadarmaswarupine stavakay jadamasya sarvadarmaswarupine avatar varishtaya ramakrishna yate namah asato ma sadgamaya tamaso ma jyote मृत्योर्मृतंगमा ओ शांति 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 लेट अस बो डाउन टू श्री राम कृष्ण द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स द सुप्रीम गॉड इन कारनेट लेट अस प्रे टू हिम to lead us from the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been discussing important topics essential for our spiritual life taken from the gospel in the last class i have dealt in great detail the need to become proficient Sri Ramakrishna said a perfect dancer will never make a false step she is so proficient in dancing she can never make a false step so those who are struggling to live a spiritual life those who want the realization of the truth realization of god in this very life you must become proficient so it is very important till you become proficient you can't expect the highest experience when you become proficient whatever you do is accepted by god the spin stutte jagat tuttam prinite prinitam jagat so lord is pleased by your actions when they are done properly correctly so one who has become proficient should never ignore the kushala aspect of his work yogaha karmasu kaushalam bhagwan says in the gita the skill in action the welfare of the society which sustains him so he was a great responsibility towards the society every one must give his share 
for the well-being of the society. It is said that science divorced from ethics is a Frankenstein monster which will destroy its very creator. So, when the Lord requires the devotee to be daksha, anapekshaha, shutit daksha, Bhagavan says in the Bhagavad Gita, he expects him also to be dakshina, daksha, dakshina. Very, very important, significant words. Daksha means proficient, dakshina means compassionate. So one must be very compassionate towards one's own fellow men and women. It is a spiritual quality. To be compassionate is a spiritual quality which you must develop in order to realize God. When the devotee does all work in a proficient way, but as an instrument of the Lord and for the sake of the Lord, then every bit of his work becomes a benediction to mankind. So to conclude the topic which I spoke in last Tuesday, one must be proficient. As Sri Ramakrishna said, a perfect dancer will never make a false step. So your proficiency in work, in devotion, in competency, in everything, you must be proficient. That is the meaning of daksha. Daksha means able, competent, skillful, careful, attentive and prompt. All these are included in the word daksha. These are all the constituents of daksha. So whatever action you do, it must be perfect oriented. And as Lord Krishna says, you must be skillful in your action. And finally, you must be totally dedicated to the Lord. then you will get the realization of God. In this very life, it is possible to experience the highest truth. Well, that concludes the topic which I talked in the last class. Today, I am taking another subject which is also very essential for us to know. Tomorrow we are observing very important uh, function. It is worship of the Guru. It is the most blessed day in the spiritual life. Guru Puja is most sacred function of all the spiritual aspirants all over the world, whether a Christian or a Muslim or anybody, any race. Guru is Guru. <coughs> guru means he who leads the disciple from darkness to light. That's the meaning of Guru. Who dispels darkness. 
who helps the disciple to get enlightenment, to get illumination. So, I am taking the subject related to that, how Sri Ramakrishna, the greatest incarnation, was a unique spiritual teacher. Every one of you can become a remarkable student. You must become a remarkable student in order to understand the remarkable teachings of Sri Ramakrishna. Bhartar Hari has composed 100 verses. They are called Niti Shataka, full of uh, spiritual contents, words of wisdom. There he says, a person without knowledge is a brute. So, how it is very important to get the knowledge. It is knowledge that raises a person from the brute level to the human level and ultimately to the divine level. Knowledge is very important. Nahi jnani na sadrisham. Knowledge is unparalleled. Sri Ramakrishna said, Divine Consciousness is not possible without knowledge. So, how important it is that we should open up to the knowledge. Secular knowledge gives a person the capacity to earn his livelihood, to take care of himself, to take care of his family, and to live a decent life in the society. That's all. That's the result you get from the secular knowledge. Spiritual wisdom, on the other hand, helps you to transcend all your weaknesses and limitations and it will help you to rise to spiritual heights. In Chandogya Upanishad, there is a statement, it says, Whatever is done with full knowledge and understanding becomes more effective. It further emphasizes that knowledge acquired from teachers alone surely becomes well established. So, Apart from the fact that knowledge is necessary, that it should be acquired from a competent teacher to become effective is equally important. I am pinpointing how it is very uh, necessary to know the part played by Guru towards the disciple. So, Guru-disciple relationship is vital for your spiritual development and realization. So, you have to be very uh, watchful and careful to maintain that sacred relationship between 
the guru and yourself a disciple your whole spirituality is based on your relationship with the guru never get lost be always aware of this ideal be always aware then you will be safe safe till you reach the goal you don't have to worry for anything because the guru always protects you guides you leads you loves you he takes all the trouble to see how you develop your life the disciple may not know but the guru knows his responsibility because the guru is a matured person and the guru is one who has experienced in spiritual life so it becomes all right when you qualify yourself as a proper student a proper disciple so there are some qualifications to become a proper student or a proper disciple one is you must have genuine desire to learn to learn this is the first point it's only hungry man that can really relish food similarly it is the earnest student eager to learn that can really learn and enjoy it so the first qualification is to learn genuine desire to learn the second qualification which is equally important is humbleness humility if knowledge imparts humility to a person by making him realize how little he knows compared to what is yet to be known the opposite should equally hold good if one wants knowledge he must be humble especially before them from whom he wishes to learn the third quality which is required of a student which is a corollary of humility it is obedience to the guru this is a necessary virtue since it often takes time for the teachings to sink into the mind of the student and flower out from there so the student or the disciple must have patience and obediently accept the teaching so if you come to shri ram krishna shri ram krishna as the guru if you are approaching him with that attitude how much instructions very meticulously shri ram krishna has given in gospel you have to follow them you have to select the teachings which are possible for you to practice them first of all you must find out to which group of devotees you might belong to and then you take those instructions and follow them shri ramakrishna may not be 
present physically in a visible form but he is very much present in an invisible way he is present through his teachings if you follow his teachings you are sure to see him this however does not mean intellectual slavery it doesn't mean that the student is free to ask intelligent and searching questions in the process of exploring new horizons of knowledge to solve his doubts and get clarity of understanding and another qualification required of a disciple is that he is advised to offer useful personal service to the teacher all these steps are very important if you are careful about practicing following these steps you'll be a wonderful student in fact in our ramkrishna mission we have got a training center in belurmat the headquarters of the ramkrishna mission all over the world the novices they come to belurmat they stay there they should get training two years training course exclusively to train the spiritual aspirants the training center is meant for that because i was the first batch from bangalore and uh, everything was new to me culture place people language food habits everything is different everything is different but still that zeal to learn that zeal to live spiritual life that proved a miracle so you have to be there patiently follow all the spiritual teachings It, their teachings are meant for practicing is not simply to hear and let go the teachings are meant to be practiced more so who are struggling to live that life we have taken up monastic life we should follow these instructions more seriously than anybody else and there every body would be given some work they would distribute the work gardening and health service sanitation service to the guru who is the guru there the principal of the training center is the guru well the principal was a swami and all the teachers were swamis only because it is a monastic training center exclusively for the monastic members to be trained there and uh, i got the opportunity of serving the teacher of the training center the principal for two months in that service i learned many things first of all i came very close to the teacher secondly i followed him observed him how very thorough he was in his habits in his routine in his practices in his reading he was taking bhagavad gita class for us so 
it, it impressed me immensely. So, it is also very important to get the grace of the Guru. The Guru's grace is God's grace. God's grace comes through Guru's grace. Guru's grace comes through your service. So, Lord Krishna also says in the Bhagavad Gita, Tadviddhi pranipate na pariprasne na sevaya Upadekshantite jnanam jnanina stattva darshinaha Excellent passage. Learn, learn it by prostration, by inquiry and by service. So, by doing service, you become humble. Your ego is brushed up. Or I should say, your ego is subdued. Well, one may say that this system was no more in modern times because in previous times there were Gurukula system. The students would live with the Guru and Guru would always be with the students. Then all what I all said may be true, but in modern times, how to understand? It can be interpreted as an advice to establish a personal rapport with the teacher. Now, as to the qualifications of a teacher, especially in a secular field, it is said that he should possess three kinds of love. One is love of knowledge, second love of teaching and thirdly love of students. He must love the students. Since acquisition of knowledge is a continuing process, a good teacher is ever eager to learn more and more. He is equally eager to impart to his students what he has learned by adopting suitable techniques and methods. Again, teaching being a transference of knowledge from one living mind to another living mind, it becomes smooth and easy when the two minds are in rapport through love. Hence the emphasis on loving one's students. Now, if you study Sri Ramakrishna, you will see how all these are perfectly pronounced in his life. A good teacher is a good student first. And Sri Ramakrishna has declared, you read it in the Gospel, as long as I live, so long do I learn. Sri Ramakrishna's teachings. He has said like that. So, he was an eternal student, ever eager to learn. When he was not in Samadhi, or in any overpowering spiritual state, he would observe things with a keen eye and ascertain their truth through searching questions. There are some incidents which we can see. Once he was taken to a photographer's studio, he showed some interest in the process of photography. So the people of the studio took him around and it was explained to Sri Ramakrishna 
how a plain glass can get the image permanently impressed upon it when coated with certain chemicals. On another occasion, he was taken to Calcutta Museum. He saw the fossil of an animal there. The authorities of the museum explained to him how a live animal, when it is buried under heavy mass of earth and rocks, it gets converted into a strong formation. It becomes uh, a stone as it were. After a few thousand years, both these pieces of information created a lot of excitement in Sri Ramakrishna. Then after he returned to Dakshineshwar, he used these two principles very effectively to convey some wonderful truths of spiritual life to his devotees and disciples. Once he was talking to Keshavendra Sain at Dakshineshwar, he said, Today I enjoyed very much the machine by which a man's picture is taken. One thing I noticed was that the impression does not stay on a bare piece of glass, but it remains when the glass is stained with a black solution, chemical. In the same way, see how Sri Ramakrishna interprets it. Mere hearing of spiritual talk does not leave any impression. People forget it soon afterwards. But they can retain spiritual instruction if they are stained inside with earnestness and devotion. Sri Ramakrishna said like this in the Gospel. On another occasion, he was addressing the devotees in his room at Dakshineshwar. He said to them, I visited museum once, I was shown fossils, a whole animal has become stone. Just see what an effect has been produced by company. Likewise, by constantly living in the company of a holy person, one verily becomes holy. Sri Ramakrishna has said like this in the Gospel. There is another incident. Once Sri Ramakrishna was taken to circus, one of the most exciting feats exhibited there was by an English woman. She stood on one foot on the back of a horse which was racing around a circular track. Above the track, large iron rings had been hung. As a horse raced around the track, the woman would jump through the iron rings, always alighting on one foot on the horse's back. That was very exciting scene. Sri Ramakrishna enjoyed this thoroughly. Later on, referring to this, he remarked to the devotees, Did you see how that English woman stood on one foot on her horse while it ran like lightning? How difficult a feat that must be! She must have practiced a long time, the slightest carelessness, and she would break her arms or legs. She might even be killed, because the horse is moving is so fast. Now he interprets Sri Ramakrishna. One faces the same difficulty leading the life of a householder. 
a few succeed in it through the grace of god and as a result of their spiritual practice so spiritual practice is uh, most essential for those who are living a householder life but most people fail a few only like janaka have succeeded through the power of their austerity therefore spiritual practice is extremely necessary otherwise one cannot rightly live in the world as regards the third qualification of a good teacher that is love of the students how shri ramakrishna used to love his disciples it's amazing his intense yearning for vivekanand is well known if one day he is not coming shri ramakrishna would become anxious to know about him all his disciples without exception they were all loved by shri ramakrishna all the devout all the disciples including narendra nath have confessed that even their own mothers did not love them as much as shri ramakrishna loved them there are some incidents to clarify this there is one direct disciple swami adbhuta ananda ji his previous name was latu he was one of the humblest disciples once latu went on a hot afternoon to one of the shiva temples at dakshineshwar and he sat there for meditation he did not return even by evening shri ramakrishna became anxious what happened to latu where did he go so shri ramakrishna himself went in search of him then he saw him sitting in one of the shiva temples at dakshineshwar and he saw him his whole body was perspiring shri ramakrishna saw it and he began to fan him when latu opened his eyes after meditation he felt very much embarrassed his own master is fanning him but he was moved by shri ramakrishna's love towards him another incident when latu was living at dakshineshwar to sarv shri ramakrishna he used to sleep in his room uh in the early morning it was his wont to call out to shri ramakrishna with his eyes still closed and when he responded to see him first and take his blessings before starting his daily chores one day latu did not get the usual response generally shri ramakrishna would respond then opening his eyes he found shri ramakrishna was not in the room so latu went out in search of shri ramakrishna he saw finally shri ramakrishna returning happily with a shoe of latu in his hand shri ramakrishna is bringing latu's shoe and latu protested out of shock and dismay then shri ramakrishna replied look early morning 
I found, he is telling Latu, that one of your new pair of shoes was missing. Since it was purchased only the other day, and thinking how sorry you would feel, I went in search of it. Then I found out a dog had taken it. <laughs> so I recovered the shoe from the dog. Naturally, Latu was simply overwhelmed by Guru's love. So much with regard to the general qualifications of a teacher and how Sri Ramakrishna fitted into it ideally. But he was much more than all that. He was an ideal teacher in the field of moral values and spiritual disciplines. So we should take this aspect also, how he meticulously trained the disciples in spiritual ways. We shall take this topic next time class next Tuesday class page 614 Keshub, Keshub Sen asked me why do I not see God I said you do not see God because you busy yourself with such things as name and fame and scholarship the mother does not come to the child as long as it sucks its toy a red toy but when after a few minutes it throws the toy away and cries, then the mother takes down the rice pot from the hearth and comes running to the child. You are engaged in arbitration, the Divine Mother says to herself, My child over there is now busy arbitrating and is very happy. Let him be. In the meantime, Ishan had been holding Sri Ramakrishna's feet. He said humbly, it is not my will that I should do those things. Master said, I know it. This is the Divine Mother's play, her Leela. It is the will of the great enchantress that many should remain entangled in the world. Do you know what it is like? How many are the boats O oh mind, that float on the ocean of this world, how many are those that sink? Again, out of a hundred thousand kites, at least but one or two break free. And thou dost laugh and clap thy hands, O oh mother, watching them. Only one or two in a hundred thousand get liberation. The rest are entangled through the will of the Divine Mother. Haven't you seen the game of hide and seek? It is a granny's will that the game should continue. If all touch her and are released, then the playing comes to a stop. Therefore, it is not her will that all should touch her. You see, in big grain stores, the merchant keeps the rice, keeps rice in great heaps that touch the ceiling. Beside them there are heaps of lentils. To protect the grain from the mice, the merchants leave trays of puffed rice and sweetened rice near it. The mice like the smell and the sweet taste of these and so stay around the trays. They don't find the big heaps of grain Similarly, men not deluded by lust and gold, they do not know where God is. Rama said to Narada, Ask a boon of me. Narada said, O Rama, is there anything I lack? What shall I ask of thee? But if thou must give me a boon, grant that I may have selfless love for thy lotus feet and that I may not be deluded by thy world-bewitching Maya. Rama said, Narad, ask something else. 
Now they again replied, O oh, Rama, I don't want anything else. Be gracious to me and see that I have pure love for thy lotus feet. I prayed to the Divine Mother, O oh, Mother, I don't want name and fame. I don't want the eight occult powers. I don't want a hundred occult powers. O oh, Mother, I have no desire for creature comforts. Please, Mother, grant me the boon that I may have pure love for thy lotus feet. It is written in Adhyatma Ramayana that Lakshman asked Rama, Rama, in how many forms and moods do you exist? How shall I be able to recognize you? Rama said, Brother, remember this. You may be certain that I exist wherever you find the manifestation of ecstatic love. That love makes one laugh and weep and dance and sing. If anyone has developed such love, you may know for certain that God himself is manifest there. Chaitanya Deva reached that state. Just stop here. So, any questions? You are welcome to ask. Hmm. Many ways, Sri Ramakrishna himself has said, there are many ways. But you must know, whatever the ways you are following, the basic instructions are common. For example, the proficiency, you have to be proficient, whether you follow path of knowledge or path of bhakti or path of karma, whatever yoga you practice. You must be competent, skillful, attentive, prompt, everything. You must be earnest, you must be, you must be sincere, all these things are common factors. Actually, when you realize the truth, that is, realization of the truth itself is called jnana. That's called knowledge. And when you realize it, you enjoy, you are in ecstasy, that is bhakti. So, knowledge leads to devotion. When you are seeing God face to face, there is a knowledge. When, when you see it, you become ecstatic. You lose yourself totally. You enjoy rasatmaka. That is bhakti. So in the final analysis, there is no difference at all. Bhakti is a taste. Taste of experience is called bhakti. Taste. What is attachment? No. Yeah, no. Guru's, Guru's love towards uh, the disciple cannot be called as attachment. He is concerned about the welfare of the student, that's all. He is concerned about the welfare of the student. He wants that student to, to realize the truth, that's all. Attachment means uh, bondage. So, in the, in the whatever, see, for example, if you are attached to Lord Shiva or Lord Vishnu, it's not called as attachment. Attachment comes only with reference to the worldly things. When you are distracted from God, unaccount of your mind uh, sticking onto something else, that's called attachment. It won't allow you to go towards God. You got stuck up there. That's called attachment. For example, probably you have heard of the story of Bharata, uh, a very great king. After living nicely, after ruling the kingdom very well, he handed over the charge and went to the forest to live a life of a hermit. And he was doing long hours of meditation and he was in ecstasy almost every day. He was very adept in meditation. One day he was sitting on the shore of the river near the hermitage. He saw suddenly 
a deer jumping into the water because it was frightened it heard the noise of a tiger or a lion it's it it uh, assumed probably the tiger is uh, attacking so it jumped into the river it was pregnant so it gave birth to a child and it died the mother died and the child is sinking in the water so he saw that so he left his meditation seat jumped into the river brought that deer the baby and he began to nurse it and it grew well and he became so attached to that previously he used to sit for long hours in meditation it began to slowly reduce from 10 hours to 8 hours to 6 hours 4 hours 3 hours 2 hours 1 hour half an hour 15 minutes then now and the deer was growing well it would run to the forest for some reason if it doesn't come at the correct time he would call where have you gone where have you gone and it would respond then he will be satisfied so like that it went on and uh, the time came when he has to leave the body and the deer is coming and standing by the side of the bharat with a sad face and he is just looking at the deer and he passed away because he was so attached to the deer so what happened was next life he was born as a deer because that attachment should go so in order to get out of that attachment he has he was to be born as a deer but because he had done so much meditation in his previous life he got that memory he thought oh in my previous life i was not a deer i was a i was bharata i was doing meditation because i was attached to this deer i became deer now now he now i should be careful i should not be i should not lose my consciousness so what he thought even though he was in the deer's body he stayed around the hermitage of the rishis where the rishis would always chant uh, uh, upanishads and discuss they would discuss also every day they would discuss the knowledge of the atman and the deer would stay there and then it passed away when it passed away he again got a human body then he became jada bharat yeah actually our bharata the real the name of india is called bharat the bharat is because of this bharat the name is bharat so he became jada bharat in that jada bharat state as soon as he was born as a human being he was illumined he doesn't care for anything else of course then the story goes somebody wanted to uh, have a human sacrifice the king of the place and they were searching for a person and this person was sitting there in the <laughs> field and uh, this uh, people came over oh, here is the person he was looking very strong and stout all right they took him come you are required so they took him took him to the temple and uh, they did all worship to him i mean uh, they did give a bath they give they did uh, so many ritualistic uh, procedures they did and finally they were about to offer him they were about to cut his head jada bharat but jada means inert he would not react he would not react at all so even at that stage he is as if nothing is happening still simply keeping quiet let anything happen he is not he, because he was very different he is not body he is not mind why should he bother let them do anything but then the goddess there so when when the priest took this word up the hand was held up there with the same sword that priest head was cut off <laughs> by the goddess and all the people ran away <laughs> and jadabhar was saved this is that story is there in bhagavat you can read that it's a beautiful story so attachment means like that suppose you go to a, a pet small and bring a pet every day you begin to see and look into that hmm? like that you become attached and there was a devotee in uh, in louisville very good devotee and uh, there was a program in some other place and 
all the devotees were planning to go there i was there at the time and uh, we asked that the devotee also that lady devotee whether she would be coming she very good devotee she, oh swami ji i cannot come because i have got a i have got a cat and uh, it is very old what she said is true what she said is true it is very old i don't know what will happen to it so i have to be there so i cannot come but it takes a long time a reason may be, you may you may give a valid reason that's a different thing but attachment because if the cat were not there if the cat were not there she would not have that kind of feeling at all compassion compassion is all right but you can make alternative arrangements you can tell somebody to take care of it it is not necessary that you should be there is it not alternately you can do many things but she she wants to be there she loves it so much she can't part with it like that anyway it's a big subject <laughs> it's a big subject any more question do you have no all right we shall stop chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within own name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names so lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name O oh my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree. Take no honor to thyself, give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O oh Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times I say may be reborn, grant me, O oh Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath thy feet. O oh, how I long for the day when an instant's separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns away with its desire, and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet, let me be in unwavering devotion. neither imploring the embrace of thy arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still as the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt but thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be dead all people may the sovereign and righteous free rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be free from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. 